Today we're looking at how we can actually use our array of type. It's that um, object-oriented array that we made so we could actually um, use a data, make our own data structures. It's the first one we worked with. And so we've already used it earlier where we used it to make an array of int. And so you can see that right up here where I made an array of int called second array and third array and I actually used that to do some manipulation on that. We want to do some advanced features that we can actually use the read from the, our, our objects. We can actually do a lot more data than some of just a quick little one or two, three things. So we have our vector of crime data that we went to and we read that um, crime data from our structures. As you can see, it just got that path to go from there. And that's that 117,000 line entry. So we actually see what happens when we're using a much larger scale file than simply just a couple ints. And so I'm just going to make an array of crime data objects and called data. I'm going to pass it the size of that since I already know how big that is right there. And I'm going to go ahead and then just iterate over that structure, loop through, make some timers, and see which one's more efficient. The timer, uh, excuse me, the vector we're looking at or the array we're looking at. So we'll just go ahead and do command B to build this. And build felt, oh no. Build felt, why? It looks array of crime data, data, data size. That looks just like what I'm doing up here. Array of int, second array 400. That worked just fine. What's going on? No, no errors right here in the code I'm doing. That. Let's go over here and take a look at the actual errors on our build time that we have. And it, we get this message right here. There's a, not a matching constructor for initialization of crime data array in array HPP. And so we go over to our constructor inside our data structure. And when we're doing internal arrays in new of type array, what that's meaning, it's like, oh, no matching constructor for initialization of crime data. But I, I, I know I made initial, a constructor for it. Let's go look at crime data right here. Crime data, look, there's my crime data constructor. Yep, it's got a string parameter, perfect. So I, I know I implemented it over here. Oh yeah, look, there's my crime data constructor. It takes the string parameter implements all the way down, all the values get assigned into it, close and squiggle, we're good to go. Let's go take a closer look at that error message, go back to command five, and then ink file included from this, ink file included from this. Oh, like here's some actual information. Can a constructor not viable, require a single argument data line, but no, let's scratch that a bit, but no arguments provided. Oh, so I have right here in this, where I'm creating this type right here, it's expecting the default constructor. So I have to provide a default constructor for any data model object I'm gonna be storing inside my data structures. So I need to make sure I go in and add that to my data structure. And so even though I'm not gonna actually use it for my project, I have to add the code for it. So we'll go over here with the command one, and we're gonna go over to our um, data structure thing in our um, data group, so I'm gonna go to the data HPP, and we're just gonna add a quick little constructor. So inside the public section where it needs to be, we'll make a crime data object with no um, parameters and a semicolon for a prototype. So we've got that, save. And we'll go to a crime data CPP and inside the top of this, just right here, right under the hash include for crime data, we'll do crime data, scope resolution, crime data again, parens, squigs, close and squiggle. And that's all we have to do. But just to make sure we know why it's here, we'll add a quick little comment. And so I did a quick little comment on that. So it's included for a compilation of data structures. We needed no parameter con constructor, so we can actually use that. So again, I've not added any real actual code. All I added was a prototype and an empty constructor that I'm never going to use for anything other than the actual implicit construction with data structures. So resave and commit, of course, my data structure. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my array tester CPP file, right back to that. We'll do a command B to build again on that. And build is successful. Yes, we have successfully got that. We no longer have a warning on here about that data causing a compilation error. And if I just go ahead and run this code, my build successful, and we can see that I've created my uh, sample data structure right there, and I exit that with my little messages about the destructure right there, but now when we get into this, when I access the value out of that, I have in 1994, 47 um, microseconds for execution time for the vector versus the array, 11 microseconds. Wow, major time savings when we're looking at this. And so we see what one of the reasons why we want to use different data structures is we can look at the time factor it takes to actually open these things up, and so we can see right here, by looking at the time to access the vector timer versus the array timer, there's definite time savings we can have that happen. If I rerun that again, we can see that the time change about, again, 37.17. So again, all I had to do to allow this to not cause an error is make sure we have a quick little um, default constructor that we can use for data structure purposes. And that's it. Thanks. Have a great day.